Hello there and welcome to uh, you talking at Euronet Plus. Uh, the uh, European elections may be over, but there are other choices to be made, and namely the choice of the next European Commission and the Commission President. The uh, main candidate is uh, Jean-Claude Juncker, former Prime Minister of uh, Luxembourg and also former uh, leader of the Eurogroup. And uh, he might be the top candidate, but not the obvious choice. There are some countries that don't want to see uh, Jean-Claude Juncker as the next Commission president because he's too um, he is seen to be too federalistic and uh, with me in the studio today uh, to talk about Jean-Claude Juncker we have uh, Elmar Brock uh, German member of the European Parliament welcome hello now you are a, um, a member of the uh, same political family as Jean-Claude Juncker the uh, center-right in the European Parliament do you see him as the obvious choice Yes, he is the obvious choice because he won the elections. We told the voters before that there are top candidates and that the European Council by majority can make only a proposal uh, for Commission President. He will be elected by the European Parliament. They can make only a proposal in the light of the results of, Euro of the European elections and after consultation with the group leaders of the European Parliament. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I think uh, the possibility of maneuver for the European Council is relatively So for you, it's clear? Small, yeah. Mm. But the, um, there are some countries uh, within the council that uh, don't want to see him as the next president. And in this kind of situation, the support from Germany is really crucial, being the biggest and most influential EU country. Uh, but your own chancellor, Angela Merkel, uh, she has been hesitating a bit before the elections. She said she uh, supported uh, Juncker after the elections. She said that you might need to consider other candidates. Now she's backing him again. Uh, so... It doesn't seem that she is convinced neither. She is convinced. She proposed him on our party congress. It was a proposal of her on the CDU. She has made it very clear in the election campaign. She has made it very clear also last week that Juncker is her candidate. She will support him. But she says also in the council you have to find negotiations and solutions that to get so many countries as possible on board. But it must be also clear there's no veto principle anymore since the Treaty of Nice. It's clearly said that this proposal can only be made by majority in the council. Hmm. But the, actually, in the uh, in the um, in the meeting uh, from from last week in the council, uh, Angela Merkel said in a press conference afterwards that uh, the uh, the EU rules are very clear that uh, the the council, the EU member states, propose a candidate to be approved by the parliament, and given the uh, the uh, resistance from some other EU countries, other candidates might be considered. The European Council has only the right to make a proposal on the basis of the result of the European elections and after consultation with the European Parliament. That is written in the treaty. And there's a majority for Jean-Claude Juncker there. This has not to be a consensus principle here. The European Council can vote by majority. Hmm. But the, as the treaty says, it's going to be based on the results of European elections, like you say. Uh, but... Does that really mean that the parliament can beforehand uh, select uh, specific candidates from different po party groups? Not cannot select, but there is uh, two candidates uh, who had a chance to give, win a majority, and it shows pretty well, and that is the message which is sent, that Mrs. Jun Mr. Juncker has a majority in the European parliament. Hmm. Uh, that, I think, uh, should be a possibility, and that means that should be the re result of the... Uh, negotiations the President of the European Council has to lead in the next days and we need a decision of the European Council until the end of June so it's still time to do so but uh, uh, the it is relatively clear in which direction this position has to go. Mm. If we will not to that, betray the voters. But do you think that your own Chancellor Angela Merkel has been uh, decisive on this? Uh, because it seems that she was hesitating a bit. She has made it very clear Juncker is her candidate before the elections, after the elections. And she had made it clear again last Saturday that she is negotiating in order to get the possibility for Juncker to become president of the European Commission. Mm. It's mainly the UK which is the biggest opponent uh, against Juncker, but uh, you also have other countries having doubts uh, about him, uh, Sweden, Hungary, uh, Netherlands, also uh, Italy and France are, is mentioned among these uh, categories of, of countries. Uh, what, what do you say about the the resistance? Because in the parliament he has a lot of support, even from the social democrats, but in the council it's the, the other conservatives that are uh, where you find some resistance. You have only resistance from Orban, 
from the EPP party until now, from Hungary. Cameron does not uh, is not part of the EPP group anymore, uh, and it's not possible that But one. Sweden, can, for instance, is. Sweden has not said it's against Juncker. Reinfeldt has said he has no right to make any decision until now before he's not consulted the European Affairs Committee of these national parliaments. It's a different story. And I'm clear because of the socialists also also there. And if you have an agreement with the socialists, there will be a majority in that committee. So I have no doubts about that. And I think it's just enough of a majority in the, in the European Council. It's not a veto principle anymore. That was changed after John Major stopped Jean-Luc de Haan in, in 1994 in order to make that not possible anymore as it happened at that time. But as you see, it's right, it's not a veto. So with the majority in the council, um, they will pass Jean-Claude Juncker as, as, as the candidate. But still, normally, uh, they try to reach a consensus on this. But they have to look also that they have to find a consensus of the European Parliament. We have the last word. word. The European Parliament elects. The other can make only a proposal. And uh, I do not see anybody else who might get a majority in the European Parliament. And this has to be taken into account if you read the treaty rightly in the light of the European elections after consultation with the European Parliament. Mm. And as you say, the Parliament, you and the other parliamentarians will have to approve the next candidate. No, we have to elect. Elect, yes. That's yeah. a big difference. And what will happen if the EU countries, uh, when they meet next time, propose another candidate than Juncker? Then we will vote no. So you will vote no? Yeah, I will vote no because I do not want to betray my voters. I promised my voters that I will vote for the winner of the European elections. This is in this case Juncker. And if I would do it differently, then I would betray my voters. Hmm. And the um, uh, I suppose that this is a matter of, uh, uh, of democracy, uh, that um, the European Parliament is v elected by the, the European citizens. Uh, one... Uh, Something that has been discussed, uh, debated the last couple of days, has been um, in the elections to the European Parliament. Uh, there's been people with two passports or um, someone with one passport living in the country being able to vote twice. Uh, what is your opinion on this? Is, is that really a, a functioning democracy, you would say? I think that an administrative thing and uh, only a few people did that uh, because they were not rightly informed about that. That is not a question of very high importance and high numbers which had an impact on these elections. But do we know that? Hmm? Do we know that? I think we know that, yes. We can see it in the figures and see uh, how the who voted where. This is always taken into account. It's no problem to find that out. Hmm. I think it's a very limited numbers of people who have no impact on the result of the elections. Yeah. Okay, uh, so we will uh, have to wait and see, uh, I guess, with the um, uh, choice of uh, Shongto Juncker uh, in these elections. Uh, the um, uh, the uh, EU leaders will meet again in Brussels uh, in the end of June to try to reach a compromise and try to uh, uh, propose a uh, official candidate uh, to the European Parliament. Thank you, uh, Elma Brock, for being with us uh, today in the studio. And uh, thank you also to our viewers and listeners. And we see you next time.